The purpose of this video is to discuss the properties of the image display object. You can add an image display object to your experiment by dragging it from the toolbox and simply adding it to any procedure in your experiment. By default, it will be named image display one. Generally speaking, we recommend changing the name to reflect the function of the image display. Otherwise, double click on it to open it in the workspace. So the purpose of the image display object is to show only one image at a time. So as you can see, there's nothing that you can do on this field here. This is made strictly to present the image. So if you click on the properties page here, you can see the, the most important property on the image display properties page is the file name. This is the image that you're going to load. You can either add an image directly by typing in the file name here or clicking on this folder icon. This allows you to browse for the image. So if I want to, I can go into pictures and I can add different pictures that I have saved onto my computer. Otherwise, if I have them already saved in the same place as my experiment file, all I have to do is reference them by name. So for example, redcar.bmp. If I had a redcar.bmp image in this folder, then it would automatically pull that up. But I'm going to delete that. You can also put an attribute reference in here. So this can change on a per trial basis. You then have a couple of options to edit this object. So you can mirror the image left and right. You can mirror it up and down. If the object is either too big or too small, you can use the stretch property to stretch the image to fit the screen. You can then change the stretch mode. You can either stretch it both left, right, and up and down, or only left and right, or only up and down. The source color key property allows you to toggle this on and off. And what the source color key does is it allows you to select a color to emit from your image. So for example, if you're making an image in Photoshop and have an all purple background, and you would not like the purple background to appear, you can simply change the source color key to yes and then change the source color key property to purple. That way all of the purple in this image will be emitted. You can then choose the align horizontal and line vertical properties. These will currently be at center, so the image will appear in the very center of the screen, but if you would like it to be offset either along the X or Y axis, you would change the align horizontal for the X axis and the align vertical for the Y axis. The clear after property allows you prime to wipe the image from the screen after it's done presenting instead of simply placing something over top of it. The back color allows you to determine what the background color of the image looks like if it is not taking up 100% of this area. And the back style can be either transparent or opaque. And then the display name allows you to decide which monitor this is being displayed on. The frame allows you to change how big the image is going to be on the screen. So the size property allows you to determine is the image going to take over 100% of the screen or only a smaller portion of it. This can be set in either percentages or pixel values. The position allows you to change where the image shows along the X and Y axis. So right now, at default, it is set to appear in the very center of the screen. But if you would like it to appear on the left or on the right, or by varying degrees of that and including pixel values, which are not included here, you can change that. And the X align and Y align allows you to determine where the point of reference is for the image. It, by default, it is set to the very center of the image. So you are going to look at the very center of the image and change the X and Y property for where that center of the image is. However, if I change my X align to left and my Y align to top, the X and Y properties over here are changing where the top left hand corner of my image is. So it would be this point of my image object. Generally speaking, keeping this at center is best practice. The border color allows us to put a border around the image and the border width allows us to put a pixel value on how wide the border is. The duration input tab looks like the duration input tab of every other E object that we've had so far. The duration property is currently set to 1000. This is just the default of 1000 milliseconds. You can change that to infinite or whatever you'd like. You can also put in an attribute reference in here as well. Data logging allows you to either log data, standard data logging, which we will discuss later, uh, only response data, only time audit data, or only custom data. The timing mode can be set to either event or cumulative, whether you want to focus on the duration of the object and prioritize that over the duration of the trial, which would be event, or if you care more about the duration of the trial than the duration of the actual object itself, then you can select cumulative. And pre-release allows you to determine how much of this object's duration you're going to give for the next object to load. Under the input masks is where you actually create input masks that allow you to interact with this object. 
And if you click add, you can respond either using a keyboard, a mouse, or a button object by default. If you have other devices, they will show up here as well. You can change the allowable. It By default, it'll say any. You can change that to whatever you'd like. This is which keys on the keyboard in this instance are participants allowed to click. The correct answer lets you determine whether or not there is a correct answer. And if there is, you can put whatever your correct response is here. So if it is the space bar, I would simply type the word space in all caps with curly brackets. The time limit property allows you to determine how long the participant has to respond to this object. By default, it's set to same as duration, which means participants have 1000 milliseconds or the entirety of its duration on the screen in order to respond to it. You can also change this to any set number that you'd like. If you'd like the response window either smaller or larger than the duration of the object itself, or you can set it to these different points in the experiment. So infinite means it will never stop. End of proc means that it will wait until the end of the procedure until feedback will wait until it runs into a feedback object. And the end action allows you to determine what happens when you respond to this object. Terminate will stop processing of this object and will move on to the next object. None means nothing will appear to happen. And jump will allow you to move to any point in the experiment that you mark with a label object. And then the jump label property allows you to determine where that point is. So like all other e-objects, there is a task events tab. It allows you to time lock different events in your experiment with different parts or different times in the experiment. So we have our start time, our offset time, our onset time, um, our finish time, and our action time. You can actually time lock different tasks or different functions for E-Prime to complete with each event in E-Prime. So if I want something to happen on the onset of this image, so the second or the millisecond that it appears on the screen, I would simply click on image display one dot onset time and then I would choose what I want E-Prime to do at that point. The Experiment Advisor tab allows you to log onset to onset stats, onset delay stats, and load time stats. They will show up in your Experiment Advisor report at the end. The Logging tab allows you to determine which pieces of data you're logging. If you're currently logging the accuracy, correct response, response, RT, and RT time, this is the same thing as selecting response only on that duration input tab. If you are selecting duration error, onset delay, onset time, and onset to onset time, that is the same thing as time on it only on the duration input tab, and the collection of these two is what standard data logging is on the duration input tab. And then if you select anything other than these three options that I had mentioned, so if I also want to log duration and finish time, then this is the same thing as selecting custom, and then you would come here and you decide which custom you would want to add. Then if you go over to the sync tab, we can choose to sync either with the vertical blank or opt out of it, and the same thing with the object's offset. And then if you go to common, you can change the name, the tag of the object, which has no bearing on data collection, but it just allows you to come up with a nickname for the object and any notes that somebody else might have. The generate pre-run property allows you to determine if this object is being loaded at the top of procedure or before the object actually runs, and if you keep it at its default of inherit, then it is going to stick with before object run. And then this little checkbox down here allows you to handle a conditional exit. So can I conditionally exit out of this object whenever it runs? This concludes all the properties for the image display object. Please feel free to tune in for other videos. Thank you very much for watching.